Meet Lorna Summers, a single mum who simply can't resist bagging bargains. That's £2.50. They're half price, reduced down to only a pound. Too good to resist. I do love a bargain. It makes me feel really good when I find something I love. And it's been reduced. That's like, wow, that's super. That makes my day. As a part-time textile student, Lorna takes home just £988 a month. But her bulk bargain buying means she spends over double that, racking up a debt of £39,000. I like having beautiful things, and I think beautiful things are there to be born. I like to look good. That is part of who I am, and I've always been like that. Lorna certainly knows how to shop. Trouble is, she doesn't know when to stop. This is my clothes room, where I keep all my beautiful things. I have probably got 50 hats, 30 pairs of gloves, 50 or 60 glittery scarves, 50 blouses, 150 skirts, 250 dresses, 40 ball gowns, 120 pairs of shoes, and 130 pairs of boots. That's quite scary, really. But I love them. It's time this bargain hunter made some reductions of her own. Lifestyle expert Jay Hunt will show Lorna how to stop spending and start earning. You're in your 40s, you have two children, you might not be at Rio Carnival on a float, let's use this and get some money. While psychological coach Benjamin Fry will tackle the buried emotions that drive her addiction. Do you think in some ways it's easier to live in there than out here? Can Lorna say no to the sail rail and finally face up to her responsibilities? I think it would be quite hard for me to change my shopping habits. But I have come to the stage where I may have to end up selling my house. Single mum Lorna Summers quit the rat race 12 years ago and moved to the Kent coastline to live by the sea. With her parents' help, she bought a five-bedroom house which she shares with her two children, 12-year-old Aurora and 9-year-old Connor, not to mention their menagerie of eight dogs and ten puppies. The daily routine can be <coughs> rough. <coughs> Since the relationship with the father of her two children collapsed five years ago, Lorna's been spending like there's no tomorrow. Got one of those, got one of these. Haven't got one of these, though. My motto in life is really, if you see something you love and you really love it and you know you're going to wear it, you should buy it. She's already remortgaged the house to pay off a £40,000 debt and has since run up a further £39,000. Having debt is pretty horrible. But when I look around and I've got all these beautiful things, it's the swings and roundabouts thing. You have the things that you want, but you have the debt as well. Lorna has artistic ambitions. She spent the past four years taking courses in flower painting, mosaic tiling and currently hat design. But studying doesn't come cheap. I have to buy quite a lot of materials, art stuff, sewing equipment, and that, of course, all goes on my credit cards as well. Lorna's parents have bailed her out before, but they can't bail her out again. If she doesn't change her ways, she might lose her most prized possession. I do love this house, and my children love it, and I'd really like them to grow up here. So it would be all of us having to readjust and stop buying whatever we want to. While Lorna's at college, Benjamin and Jay have borrowed the keys to her house. Oh, God. Wow. They're looking for clues as to how she's racked up her jaw-dropping debt. They're going to see a lot of stuff and they're just going to be horrified. I know they are, because people always are. Oh, wow. Oh, my God, Jay. It's incredible. It's like the Serengeti or something. Everything's so over the top. I mean, look at those curtains. Most people would have, like, one curtain. It's, like, very theatrical, but mm. it's almost like she just can't stop. This sewing machine here, you know, that's a nice £300, £350 sewing machine. That's a nice machine to have if you haven't got any money. And also, that's a nice collection of PlayStation games if you Absolutely. haven't got any money. I've had enough in here, Jake. I'm Do, you dare? To... Well, Do you dare? Well, trepidation of dare? upstairs. Go on, oh. then. Mind the boots, Benjamin. Oh, my God, it's getting worse as we get up here. Oh, my God. This is ridiculous. How much stuff is in here? It's like a store, actually. But what's she doing with it all? Because all this stuff has got price tags on. It's new, isn't it? £4, £18, 
20 pounds. See, it's interesting because I'm sure her mind would be thinking, I'm such a clever bargain hunter, all mm. this money I'm saving. But if we average out a purchase at 15 pounds, just look how many there are in well, here. Well, it's got to be a thousand, two thousand things in here. I can't even get in here. Uh, as we oh. predicted and more. It's sort of not a shock and yet it's a shock. I mean, this to me looks like a vintage shop. You know, all this jewellery and it's like it's all colour coded, even on the bed head. There's all these hair clip arrangements. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, look, amazingly, you just found the statements in a room full of clutter. Wow, I'm just interested to see what she's spending. A lot of credit cards, mm. co-op, Barclay card, Lloyd's, a Marks card, Capital One card. I mean, when you look down all of this, Cancer Research, so she obviously buys a lot from charity shops, mm. Primark, Henny's, TK Maxx, I mean, all of them look pretty much the same mm -hmm. and jammed up to their limits. I think what she's doing is paying off minimum payment mm -hmm. every month and then doing that thing of just moving all her money around so she feels she's in control. I mean, I might have to really have a serious go through this because if this is the amount of stuff she's buying, these are going to be complicated. Yeah. Having scoured her finances, Benjamin and Jay decide to show Lorna the true cost of her so-called savings. They know Lorna can't resist a bargain, so they've arranged a little demonstration to put the boot in. Hello. Hello. How have you been, Benjamin? Hi. Nice to meet you. Hi, I'm Jay. Nice to meet you. How are you? Good. Can Benjamin and Jay drive home the seriousness of her situation? Now, before we open this car boot, we just wanted to ask you, um, what you think your current debt situation is today. Do you know how much you owe? Yeah. How much is it? Uh, 35,000 on my credit card. Right, well, we've worked out that your debt is, in fact, 39,000 pounds in total. Does that surprise you? No. That we found another four? No. <laughs> well, I haven't added it out for a few weeks, so no. Oh, right. You don't seem at all phased by this. Well, I knew it was about 35, so 39. Oh, okay. And you think 39 is about 35, so that's all right? Well, it's just a few thousand more, isn't it? That may be the thinking that got you here in the first place. <laughs> Probably did. It's obvious Lorna doesn't understand just how bad things are. To get the message across, Benjamin and Jay take her for a spot of window shopping to reveal a frightening financial future. If you carry on spending as you've been doing, you'll see on this mannequin here, in five years' time, you'll be £100,000 in debt. But if we look out even further than that, maybe 10 years' time, 10 years' time, £160,000 in debt. Yes, if nothing changes and everything just stays the same, but things do change. You sound confident that something will change. Yes, I am. Because otherwise, you'll be retiring with £304,000 of debt. So what do you feel when you see these figures on the three T-shirts? I don't think that far ahead. But that far ahead will arrive. It will eventually be five years from now, 10 years from now, 22 years from now. I just always think something will come up. And the, the okay. thing we're thinking about... Maybe we're that something. Look, yeah. here. Well, yes, something here we come are. Up. It? Yes. <laughs> it might not be what you wish but for. It's, no. <laughs> it's not just going to be something that happens to you. It's something that you have to do as well. Yes, and I'm looking forward to that, yeah. Okay. And I'm, yeah, I like doing things. We can I've be a catalyst for change, but yeah. the only person that can, can change, change here is you. It's me, absolutely. Is Lorna ready to rise to the challenge? I've come to a crux, really, now where I need to do something about my debt um, and stop spending the way I do, stop buying the kids everything they want, stop making so many impulse purchases for myself and for them, um, and become better at organising what I do spend my money on. It's time for Lorna to get a grip on reality. She may love making hats, but has she got a head for figures? We just wanted to know if you have any idea how much you spend in an average week. Um, probably about 150, 200, mm. maybe. Mm. You've done better than most, actually, because you do get through, in an average week, 
217 pounds. So not that far off, was it? Mm. Okay. Oh. Mm. Now we've got to work out how much you think you can get through minimum amount in the next seven days. 75. 75? She thought it was 115, so she's bidding us half of what she thought. That's not really cold <laughs> turkey, is it? That's just a no, quiet week. That's cutting back. Now, I was going to say 50 quid. It's generous. It's because you're a mother. She's being <laughs> kind to you. What do you reckon? So the money you give me is for food. Food, travel, transport, treats out, things for the children. That's got to account for everything. Right. That's going to be quite hard, then, mm. if it's got to take yeah. in food and dog food and yeah. petrol. And... That's the plan. Right. What's interesting is you look worried now for the first time today. <laughs> this is real. Like, ideas about the future and ideas about the past don't seem to bother you, but approaching the possibility of the next seven days with only £50, I think yeah. you're beginning to see the reality of what money means in life and could mean in your life if you don't get some control over it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you have made me nervous. Yeah. yeah. Actually. The fifty pounds budget is going to be quite, quite hard, I think, because I don't generally budget for shopping or uh, anything else. I just buy it as and when I need it or want it. So it will be quite hard. But as long as I can still put petrol in the car and feed the dogs and have food that the kids want to eat then it will be OK. It's Lorna's first day of cold turkey, and she's staying in to dye her hair. She's finding avoiding the shops the simplest way to stick to her new £50 budget. I haven't been out today. I've just stayed home and done my college work, so I'm getting really well with that. So I haven't had to spend anything. Um, but tomorrow I've got to go out and get dog food for these little guys. <sighs> have not I missed? I've got to get some dog food for my little Nemo. It's only day two and Lorna's back on the high street. Her new budget means saying no to the children, but can she control her urge to treat them? It's really hard shopping with the kids in Woolies because there is just so many things that they want to get. So many toys for Connor, DVDs that I quite like, stationery stuff that Aurora loves. They know we're on a budget, so they have been very good and they have actually brought their own money. But I will have to contribute just a little bit to their purchases, but that's OK. Then there's the not-so-small matter of feeding a house full of dogs. Will they swap prime chunks for cold turkey? I certainly don't get them the cheapest of the cheap because they just don't like it. So I buy food that I know they're going to eat and food that is good for them as well. It feels really, really strange paying with cash. I'm much more comfortable paying on my card because that's not so real. Today is Friday, day four of cold turkey week. Uh, I've managed not to buy any clothes or shoes or boots or anything like that. But I just haven't gone to those places where I would usually go and spend lots of money and shop and put things on my credit card. It's halfway through Lorna's cold turkey week and she's cut back on her spending. But for a lasting change, Benjamin will need to seek out the root of her compulsion. Well, let's look at what has brought you to this point. So you owe a lot of money, mm -hmm. um, and why do you owe it? Um, part of me thinks I don't see why I shouldn't have something. To understand that a bit better, would it be all right to kind of just talk about your life, your history, your past? When I was younger, I was very, very ill. Um, I spent an awful lot of my childhood in hospital, um, and I never thought I'd make it to being 30. Mm -hmm. And so to sit here and be 43 is really great. Always the same illness or different things? Yeah, or? I'm chronic asthmatic. And what would happen when you were in hospital? You'd have to be just monitored or...? I'd be on, on oxygen drugs. and with needles in my arms and intravenous drips and stuff. I've had a fair few near-death experiences. And your attitude seems to be, well, you know, I'm so lucky to be alive, why not have whatever I want? Which suggests that one of the things that you don't prioritise or even notice you want is a kind of secure financial situation. I've always also had the attitude that something will come along. Has that been your experience, that something does come along? I've always had really good parents who have always bailed me out. If so I've maybe it's not something, but somebody that comes along. Yeah, maybe I should say somebody, yeah. 
Lorna's parents separated when she was 18. Benjamin wants to explore whether this key period may have affected her choice of partners. I'd like someone like my dad. You know, like oh. I, like my dad, because he was always... If I'm, he was there for my mum if she needed him. You know, he, he was there, and he was there for me if I was ill and, and stuff. So you never trusted anyone as much as you trusted your dad? No. So on the one hand, your dad's a hero, but on the other hand, he's abandoned your mother. So, you know, the, the guys that seem to you to be most exciting, most heroic, hand in hand is going to be a real sense of mistrust. Mm. Yeah, it takes an awful lot for me to trust someone. And meanwhile, you're suffering, you're alone, you're raising kids alone. And I think that that does pain you. And where there's pain, there is often anger. I have had people, I've had long relationships I have with, with lovely guys, really lovely guys, but not, not anybody that I've ever thought, yeah, I'm going to marry you. So where does that go? Where does that fear go? Where does the anger that always comes with fear, where does that go? Well, if it doesn't go out, it goes in, and it becomes self-destructive. Yeah. And it tells you things like, well, why shouldn't I have it? After all, I've had a miserable time having this disease. I've been terrified frequently by it. My dad left. I can't get a man to be with that I want to be with. You know, I've got lovely kids, but no father figure for them. Why shouldn't I have a 27-pound belt from Monsoon or whatever it is? <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. When you say it like that, that makes perfect sense. It does. Yeah. So can I go now? So I can... <laughs> you want to go now? <laughs> shopping. Yeah. God, you are so making me want to go shopping. Right now, you want to go shopping. I want to go shopping. So yeah. Just gain really control do. of your feelings. I want to go shopping. Yeah. I want if to you walked out of here right now and went shopping, what would that achieve for you? When I shop and I see things I like. It just makes me feel happy. I like looking at sparkly things. I like mm. looking at pretty things. I like the sunny side things. of life. Yeah. It's the light, isn't it? At the end of that tunnel, yeah. And do you think the tunnel Ill is the illness? Yeah, yeah. Do you live with the fear every day that you could die of an asthma attack that day? I do, absolutely, but I don't think about that. Well, if you live with the terrifying possibility of a dangerous attack at any moment, now's a good place to stay. The past has disappointments and regrets. The future has potential catastrophe. The present is looking really good. There is only now. Yeah. Absolutely, there is only now. It was a really good opening up a session and it's made me think about things in a way that I hadn't, because I hadn't really thought that me being ill was a kind of contributing factor to anything. But maybe it is. Uh, Say hello. Say hello. Hello. Day five of Lorna's cold turkey week. She has just £16 left of her £50 budget. Hard times means she's calling in mum for a helping handout. Today, my mum will buy tea for us, which would be nice, because we haven't really been out all week, so it's a treat. <laughs> Still doing really well on the spending front because we're just eating what we've got indoors. I haven't been shopping for food. Next week will be harder because I'll probably have to get some food and stuff. So 50 pounds is quite a low budget for a week, I think, for me, my children, and my dogs to live on. While Lorna congratulates herself on her short-term cutbacks, Jay summons her to London to show her the bigger picture. She wants Lorna to start paying back her £39,000 debt. So, Lorna, what we're going to do today is talk about your new budget. But before we have a look at this, I just wanted to ask you how you'd got on with your cold turkey week. I was actually £7 under. Wow! Yeah, which is good. Did you not feel pressured to go and spend that £7? Were you happy to have that? Oh, I was really happy to have it, yeah. I was very pleased that I'd managed not to spend anything that I shouldn't on anything frivolous. Now, let's have a look at the long term budget. Now, this is your current expenditure column, where we've split everything up. At the moment, you're getting through £2,257.28p. Now, what's coming in is £988.03p. The overspend here is £1,269.25. 
So it's easy to see how your debt is accumulating. Now what we've done here on the recommended expenditure is go through and make some cuts. Now the credit card debt, which is 39,000, at the moment you're paying back 729 pounds 63 pence. Now what we're suggesting is that you put all of those debts into one consolidated loan, which would mean you'd only have to make one payment every month of 570 pounds. We've made some cuts here, food, toiletries and cleaning. We've cut that back to 150, which I personally don't think is gonna be that hard for you. What is gonna be a bother to you is clothes and crafts. Now, at the moment, that's coming in at £284.25 a month, and we've cut that back to £50. Now, what we've based that on is that that £50 is there as money for you to buy things for the children, but what it's effectively cut back is you buying anything for yourself. Now, with all the best cuts in the world, what we've still got here is a deficit of £656.78. So this is where our worry is. To me, there's two really obvious areas. There's thinking about renting a room out or selling the clothes is something that's just staring us right in the face here. Mm. Yeah, I'll have to think about it, but renting a room is a possibility. Yeah. OK. While Lorna's still a little reluctant to act on any of Jay's bright ideas, Benjamin's taking a darker approach. He wants to explore whether Lorna's childhood brushes with death have affected her attitude to life and paying off her 39 grand debt. Well, I think today what I want to work on with you is really more about what happened to you as a child around the illness. Um, and particularly around, the, you know, the real and terrifying experiences of that illness bringing you close to death. Benjamin hopes Lorna's reaction when faced with symbols of death may reveal deeper feelings about her own mortality. How do you feel about coffins? No, I don't particularly like them. I can't imagine anybody does. It's obviously a symbol of death. What I'd like you to do is I'd like you to get in the coffin. All right. So mean. <laughs> you know, what I want to see is what it's like for you to get in the coffin. OK. Oh, just my size. So how does that feel? It's quite comfy, actually. Yeah? Oh. He's determined to see how far he can push Lorna before she becomes uncomfortable with tackling the issue of her own death. Shall we just see what it's like to put the lid on? If you like. Let me know if you want to come out. OK. Cosy. Yeah. You're cosy in your coffin with the lid on. Yeah. You OK in there? I'm OK in here, yeah. And you're completely calm and relaxed? Yeah. OK. I think that this does demonstrate an unusual relationship with death. Hello. Hi. You're really fine in there, aren't you? Yeah. Do you think in some ways it's easier to live in there than out here? Well, yeah, life is hard. Life throws curveballs. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. You put your glasses back on so I can't see your eyes. You know, people sometimes do that when they want to disconnect. They don't really want to talk about it. Oh, right. It. Yeah, it's easy being in there. It's... Let's see how you feel coming out. Flame-haired phoenix. <laughs> now, how do you feel out of the box? Not as comfy as I was in it. <laughs> it's a bummer, isn't it? You're going to have to live your life outside the box until you finally get to go in it forever. Yeah, because I'd always expected it, because it was exactly. always around the corner. Exactly. Because it was something that I'd always said, oh, OK, yeah, I can exactly. deal with that. That might happen tomorrow. Yeah. So, I'm so always... what's the point in planning for the day after tomorrow? Yeah. You see, the Lorna that believes that tomorrow she might be dead is never really going to pay off her credit cards, is she? No. No. Benjamin sets Lorna a task to use the Polaroids he's taken to create a collage of her feelings about death. So how do you get on? Oh, I think it's OK. Yeah? So this is kind of 
your montage of dead Lorna. But you've been living with the dying Lorna all your life, ironically, haven't you? I've never thought of it quite like that. So shall we try and bury that idea that tomorrow you might die? And shall we try to live with tomorrow you might live? Mm -hmm. And plan for the future. And really live. We're trying to leave behind this idea you felt was always there that tomorrow might be your last day. Yeah. Or even today. Yeah. There might not be a tomorrow. Mm. Those are the thoughts that stay in the box. Yeah. And we walk away from them. That was quite weird, but hopefully I will be able to think that I'm not just going to drop dead tomorrow, which has always kind of just been in the back of my mind. Doing what we did has kind of hopefully laid it to rest. So I should be able to move on. So it's, it's been a good thing to do. Hi, Lorna. Back home in Kent, Jay started thinking of new ways for Lorna to start paying off her debt. She's convinced Lorna's skills and obsession with clothes could yield some answers. What is it that you want to end up doing, sort of within this whole big area of fashion? Um... I do like styling people, and I also enjoy making hats. So when we look forward to you making money out of fashion, how have you got a plan as to how that is going to happen? I haven't got a plan as such. Right. The worry I have is about you being focused as a businesswoman, because I think what you're in danger of being is like a 100 other people who are helping their friends, quite good, like shopping, have got a good eye, but in order to move out of that level and get you focused, using what you've got to pay the debts off and moving forward into earning some money out of something creative, I think we've got a long way to go. I am not good at the business side, no. Right. I'm not. I am good at the ideas and I'm good at the creative yeah. side. Because I'm also fascinated by the fact of where you wear all these things. Well, I don't wear all these things. Because a lot of these things have still got their labels on. Yeah. yeah Is that things you're planning to wear? Um... No, they're just things that I've liked at the time and I've bought them and I've put them in here and I still like them. How would you feel about getting rid of some of it? The thought of getting rid of much of this is horrifying. And isn't, is it? Uh, yeah, it's not an avenue I wanted to go down, really. I haven't collected all this stuff mm -hmm. for years and years and years to just go and sell it off cheaply. I have to ask you about this. It's like a sort of Mardi Gras outfit. Have you ever worn this? No. This, for me, is red rag to a bull. You are the person who has outfits for every, every single occasion that could possibly happen. You're in your 40s. You live in Herne Bay. You have two children. You might not be at Rio Carnival on a float. Let's use this and get some money. We've got £39,000 worth to pay back. There is a point at which we have to get real. And this is it. With a tiny selection from her gigantic wardrobe, Jay drags a resistant Lorna to East London to see whether she can make a profit from her booty of bargains. They're meeting vintage clothes expert Amber Butchart for evaluation. So something like this, which is a label piece suit, is that worth selling? Um, this is D&G, a diffusion range of Dolce & Gabbana, so it's probably not going to be worth as much as a natural designer piece would be. We probably price at about £35 for right. the suit. See, what I'm really interested in is having a look at something like this, because this is, I think, quite a cool piece. This is fantastic. I really oh. love this. <laughs> <laughs> it's really great. It's really theatrical. You would... I, I, I couldn't tell you where else you could go to buy something like this. How long did that take you to make that? Probably only an afternoon. I was going to a party. I needed to run something And then something you just out. sort of made something yeah. creative. Mm -hmm. oh, see, that's fantastic. A lot of vintage pieces we have in here um, are all homemade because obviously home dressmaking was, mm. was how most women created affordable fashion in the 50s, 40s, 50s and, and even in the early 60s until we got mass-produced clothing. So a lot of the stuff we have in here is homemade. Something like this that's kind of really theatrical, we'd probably price this, possibly even at more than the D&G right. trouser suit, I think. I think this is so how much would you price that up? In here, we'd probably price this for about 30 to £40, pounds, I'd say. Right. Can you remember how much you originally paid for that? 
Um, well, I bought the material, so it would have been under £10 just for the material. Right. Now, the other thing I wanted you to have a look at in here is this leopard print coat. This is fantastic. I really, really like this piece. It's great. This is the sort of thing we're looking for here all the time. So something like this, that's a good quality fake fur and it's a good fit. We'd value that quite a lot here. We'd probably price that at about 65 to 75 pounds, I think. And how much did you pay for that? Um, 4 95 in the charity shop. Oh, you said you're good at this. <laughs> <laughs> I've had it a few years and I do wear it. Fantastic. Yeah. So when you start thinking of things as money, what does that feel like, or does it not register? It's interesting to know how much they're worth now, if I wanted to sell them. And it makes me think how much other things that I've got that I'm really not attached to that much yeah. would be worth. Well, that's progress. Yeah. I think Lorna's really done quite well today. It's very small steps with Lorna the whole time, because I think she is quite scared and I think she is quite defensive. She's very, very resistant to selling clothes, but she really doesn't have any other options. So at least today, she's starting to get her head round selling some of them, if not all of them, and that is progress. Excited by the chance of turning old clothes into new cash, Lorna has a flash of inspiration. So I've been thinking about maybe having a shop eventually and selling the things I make and some of my clothes and other clothes that I get specifically to sell. That would be good. So, yeah, we'll just have to wait and see. Lorna's beginning to consider ways to make money in the here and now, but Benjamin still thinks she has problems with planning for the future. He's roped in her kids to draw some pictures that show their long-term dreams and ambitions. What I have here is a work of art I commissioned from a young man. My son. What does it mean to you? I think that's probably me doing my college work. Um, and there's him working on an ancient Egyptian thing, because mm -hmm. he's quite into that at the moment. So a quick look at the next one. Another very lovely picture done by a very talented young artist. Aurora. Hmm. What do you think it might represent? Just from giving it a first off look, it looks like me getting married. Actually, what I asked them to do was to draw pictures that represented an aspect of their future. The interesting thing about this is that actually it's Aurora's wedding. All right, that's good. Yep. And this is you. Right. Mm -hmm. Being so proud. Just coming back to Connor's picture. I didn't tell you when we looked at this that this was about the future because you very much placed it in the past and the present. Mm. You didn't think of Connor saying he wants to become an archaeologist. And there's you at work at the pyramids and him. Oh, right. The reason I asked him to do this is because when we did that exercise with the coffin, what we discovered is that you have a pretty comfortable relationship with the present as being all that's left. And therefore there's something about the normal states that people get into about their future that maybe is missing for you. So I thought to myself, who are the people that you really think are great? Your kids. And they both have a very clear concept of the future and the things that they want to look forward to doing. That's good. Or do you think you could take that as an example? Yeah. Benjamin thinks that by convincing Lorna to imagine an optimistic future, she'll put more effort into managing her life. OK, you want to talk me through it? Um, OK, this is a house in the country, and it's a house that I've actually seen, and I absolutely love it, and I do one day want to live in this house. And here's my shop, and here's lots of people going into my shop. Here are my children and their friends. They're just having fun and enjoying life, and here's some of my dogs. And then here are people wearing my hats for oh, my okay. creations. I guess what strikes me about it in one way is that you point to the house first, um, and then to the business second. And of course, in reality, it would be the other way around, wouldn't it? You'd need a successful business in order to get the house. Yeah. There's a sense of, I'll put all the pieces of my life in place and find a way to pay for it later. Yeah. Yeah. So I think what you've got to focus on if you really want to make this come true is how do you make this side of it happen? When you think about, you know, those strange thoughts of actually somehow finding it more comfortable in the coffin than outside of the coffin, where do you make sense of this future? I haven't projected myself enough and I haven't mm. thought about the future enough. I bullied you into thinking that maybe you won't die tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah, and 
then there's all this anxiety about, well, what the hell am I going to do with that time? And so this is a really nice way of beginning to treat that anxiety, beginning to modify it by having a clear picture of what you want. While Lorna comes to terms with her future, she still has to grapple with the financial demands of the present. One of my puppies, yeah, is really ill, so I'm at the moment going to Canterbury to the vets twice a day, morning and evening with her. This week's budget has totally gone out the window because so far she's cost me £280. Oh, she's got a little thing in her arm, haven't you, darling? You're going to be just fine, aren't you? Yes. Back in London, Jay's alarmed that Lorna has spent over a week's income on vet bills. She calls a crisis meeting with Benjamin. I have to say, I do find Lorna quite difficult. I've been battling with her a bit, and now she's just gone completely over budget and spent all this money on the dog. They do think that maybe this saving the dog is, is a striking parallel to her experiences, where she nearly died as a child and was repeatedly saved from that. So it may be that this is a huge emotional trigger for her, and not just a financial lapse. But there's no doubt about it, Lorna is incredibly creative. She's got loads and loads of ideas, but what she lacks is the ability to sit, have quiet space and plan how she is going to use her skills to earn herself some money and help pay off her debt. That is just not something that occurs to her. I think that she's only just begun to think about the idea of there being a future. So this whole thing about money and, and debt and saving and planning it's only just beginning to make any sense, and whether or not that's going to kick in soon enough to actually have an influence on this process, I just don't know. It sounds like you have a hell of a lot of stuff oh. to get through with her. I'm only just beginning to scratch the surface. Well, you and me both. I mean, I'm still going to try, but there is a hell of a lot more to do with her, and she needs to get on board really quickly if we're going to make any real difference with her. With Lorna's budget completely blown, she's staying at home to cut back on any spending. But there's good news on the dog front. OK, this is Scarlett, who's been ever so, ever so ill. She's on the mend now, aren't you, darling? Yes. She's so much better, she's barking at the other dogs. So she's going to be fine. This is little Nemo. He means. And this is Stormy, who's always here, eating my earrings and licking my ears. And that's Dan. Up the back there. You see Dendo? There is Laszlo. Look. Ooh. With her sick puppy's vet bill amounting to more than £380, Benjamin thinks Lorna's ten dogs and eight puppies are hindering her future as well as her finances. He calls her for a meeting. What I worry about is that in saving the dog's life, you might be killing your dream of a future. You can't equate it to that. Well, you could do. If you spent all your money on dogs and you never had the money to start your hat shop or buy that lovely house by the sea, then there is a connection between money and future, you know that. But there's not a question of whether or not I would have had the dog put to sleep just okay. because she was poorly. No way, no how. And why is that? Because I could save her, and I did, and I nursed her through it. And that's why I'm here and not Jay, because I worry that you've projected a lot of yourself into this dog. Because this is your story, isn't it? You were saved. You were nursed through it, you survived, and you're here to tell the tale. Mm. So for you to let even one of ten puppies go, it just feels like there's too much reliance, maybe, on these substitute relationships, and it's going to prevent you from forming maybe more human relationships. And I'm really worried that you're replacing those kind of dynamics and relationships with stuff. There's a lot of stuff in your house. Has a lot of animals in your house. Yeah, I can see that. I can see where you're going with that, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think about the dogs and I think about everything else in my life, and so therefore I don't have to think about anything else that may scare me or that I'm not ready for or that, yeah, is a bit of an issue for me. So, yeah, maybe I am kind of hiding behind the dogs and all the stuff and everything else that I have going on in my life. With Lorna coming to the end of her college course, Jay wants to turn hat-making into money-making. They're meeting milliner Chloe Scrivener, 
Since training with leading Uber hat designer Philip Tracy, Chloe's been running her own thriving business for over seven years. Now, Lorna, I want to introduce you to Chloe here. So initially, when you started out, how long did it take you to set up being self-employed and starting up the actual business? Um, it was actually quite an immediate thing, but I think the things that I make and design now are, are very different and I really know who my market are and mm. I really work towards my strengths and that's maybe the thing that takes a little bit more time. What was the hardest thing for you? I think initially getting the confidence to get out mm. there and get people knowing about you and what you're doing. That's what I've never managed to do mm. so far. I've had so many ideas for different things and I've tried different things but I've never gone that step yeah. forward to making them earn me a living. And do you think that's a confidence thing? Yeah, that does scare me, actually, that thing. Yeah. No, but it, I mean, that's the difficult thing for everybody. Do you find you have to sort of sell yourself? Yeah, completely. And I always got told off for not wearing my own creations and things like that. <laughs> and I think if, you, if you're not prepared to do it for yourself, then get friends that are maybe a bit more extravagant and outrageous and get them to kind of, like, promote you as well. It's really making me feel quite excited because I thought of somebody buying one of my hats mm. and wanting to buy one. And it must feel really good when somebody does buy them. Yeah. And you know they're going to go out and wear them. That, that's great. Yeah, you couldn't have a better feeling, especially when you've made something specific to go with an outfit, mm. particularly for a bride or something like that, and then they send you a photo and they tell you, oh, you know, yeah. how fantastic it was, what you did for them and things yeah, like that. that sounds so. wonderful. Mm. Bridal, is that an area to go for or to avoid if you want to actually look at making some money? I think it's definitely an area to go for. It's definitely a really sort of big market that's getting bigger and bigger. Mm. And there's a lot of shows as well that the you can get involved shows, in. Yeah. Mm. I had thought about that, because it's oh. quite sparkly, isesn't it? Yeah, you yeah. see, because Lorna yeah. really likes sparkly things. And also, uh, yeah. vintage -y. And I think that whole kind yeah. of the stuff that you naturally like and pick up, like a magpie, mm. could be easily slightly slanted yeah. into doing really, really beautiful, pretty bridal things. Yes. So it's lots of ideas then. So you look <laughs> happy good. now. You yeah. look like you're sort of like, ooh. Yeah, I'm feeling really excited. Yeah. Oh, good, Lorna. So <laughs> we've made Lorna happy today. Fired up by her meeting, Lorna's taking matters into her own hands. I got a wedding magazine the other day so that I could have a look through at the styles and the different prices for things. I want to do headdresses and tiaras and sparkly things and um, things with handmade lace on and you know, I could do some really beautiful things. Inspired by the magazines, Lorna heads into London to find specialist materials she can transform into top sellers. I've gone here specifically to look for items that I can make headdresses from and then hopefully sell them and make a profit. And I'm really looking forward to making the headdresses as well. I'm really excited. Can Lorna, the reformed spenderholic, resist the urge to splurge? That was really my first shopping experience after cold turkey and it was absolutely fabulous. So many feathers to choose from. The way I dealt with it was to give myself a £50 limit. Um, otherwise, I would have just ended up putting in more and more stuff, which is what always happens when I go to shops. So giving myself a limit was really good and worked, because I only spent 42 Yeah! Now she's got all her raw materials, Lorna's back in Kent looking for places to sell her creations and finding out the cost of running a local market stall. So Whitstable and Herne Bay are cheaper than here? Yes, Whitstable is £16 a 10-foot stall and Herne Bay is 23 She's hoping this will be a good starting point for her business dream. It'd be quite fun having a market stall here. Cheers, girls. Impressed by Lorna's initiative, Jay's rewarding her with a chance to get some new clothes without spending any money. She's introducing Lorna to a new cost-effective craze called swishing. Some could say that swishing is a glorified jumble sale, and okay. it's absolutely not that. It's glamorous clothes swapping. And we get a whole range of women here. Some want to save the planet, and they don't want to do it in bad clothes. Um, some are here to save money, so they can get the buzz of shopping without the strain on the credit card. Now, this is music to my ears. <laughs> How do you think you would feel in terms of, if you swap some stuff here, would that give you the same buzz as going into one of the local shops and buying something? I don't know. I'll have to see. OK, so we're going to really give it a try know. to yeah. see. Because it is a bit yeah. of an alien thing for you, it isn't is. it? I've Not never spending done it. money. Not spending money, yeah, and I've never swapped anything, so I don't know.
Guests at swishing parties have to bring at least one item, but can leave with as many as they like. The catch? They can only get in and grab the clothes once the swap is declared open. I think this is a really good idea. Really good idea for people. I just don't know if it's going to be my cup of tea. I don't like the fact that any moment now everybody's going to be grabbing stuff. I don't like that idea at all. I really like this jacket, um, but I'd rather be able to buy it. The thought that I could have that jacket if I get to it in time is a nice thought. But also the thought that if I don't get to that jacket in time, somebody else will get it is actually making me feel sick. With trying on time over, the ladies are awaiting starters' orders. Can Lorna battle the masses to get her perfect green jacket? Five, four, three, two, one, switch! <laughs> oh, I'm so happy. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm really pleased. I got the green jacket and I got the really nice cardigan with the uh, fur around and I got this lovely dress as well which should go really beautifully with the green jacket so I'm really pleased. Four weeks ago Lorna's frenzied thrift shopping had dumped her £39,000 in the red. Since then lifestyle expert Jay Hunt has shown her how to earn cash from her bargains and her hat designs. I'm feeling really excited. Yeah. Oh good Lorna, so <laughs> we've made Lorna happy today. Psychological coach Benjamin Fry has made her face the reasons behind her non-stop spending. The Lorna that believes that tomorrow she might be dead is never really going to pay off her credit cards, is she? No. And helped her focus on a brighter future. Lorna's almost at the end of her journey, but there's one last mental obstacle to overcome. Benjamin worries Lorna's bitter experiences of people letting her down may have made her too frightened to ask for help. He's taking her to a place in Kent where putting her life in other people's hands is vital. If I said to you, have a look up there, and trust me that it'll be good for you to go across it when I tell you to, what are you going to say? Oh, my legs are going to jelly. Do you trust me, though, to take you on an exercise that will help explore your relationship with trust and people? Yeah, I guess so. Yes. I'll have mm. a go. Have a go? Mm. Come with me. OK. Lorna's mission is to complete a treacherous 30-foot-high rope bridge and assault course. Benjamin wants to see if Lorna will agree to trust his precise instructions to complete the course. Here we go, well done. You're getting scared yet? I don't like heights. You haven't gone up high yet. It's high to me. Benjamin's worried Lorna doesn't seek help when she needs it, which may be related to her trust issues. Not looking down, not looking down at all. You know, if you get really scared or worried, you can ask me to come up and help you. OK. That's pretty high up. And it's really bouncy. I think one of the dynamics for Lorna is that she will struggle on and on on her own and not ask for help until it's too late. I'd much rather she learned to ask for help and to trust that people can be there for her. Well done. Next, Lorna needs to take a giant leap of faith and swing into a 30-foot high net. Will she ask Benjamin for support? I don't know if I can do this. Do you want any help? Oh, I don't need help. I can okay. do it, can't I? You want some help? No. <laughs> Very good. Well done. Yeah, that was really horrible. But it was harder to ask for help. So I'd rather just have a go and do it. For the next task, Lorna must take a death-defying slide on a 270-foot high wire. I really, really don't like heights. I don't like heights at all. Frozen with fear and refusing to ask for help, Lorna's not moving. Believing she'll find it easier to complete the course with him there, Benjamin steps into the breach. The reason I come up here is because this next bit, having seen you on that rope bridge, I'm really worried that you can't do it on your own. So I'm going to be on standby in case you need me. 
Up you go, Lorna. Okay. You all right? Yeah. Here I go. You're going to hate me for saying this, but you seem to get better after someone came up there with you. No, because you weren't doing anything. But that's what it's about for you. You're always thinking, like, if there's nothing a person can do, then they don't exist. Yeah, the fact that someone that. can just be doesn't register with you. No, whenever people have just been, it just goes wrong. It's just, goes wrong. It just doesn't okay. work. So your trust has been lost? Yeah. By other people's behaviour? Yeah, I don't trust people, no. You don't trust people. Especially men, no. In order to persuade Lorna to consider asking for help, Benjamin is upping the ante by insisting she completes the final rope bridge blindfolded. I'm going to make you do something quite difficult with the blindfold on. You're going to have to trust me to keep you safe. OK? Yeah. Now, I want you to give me your hand here. Now she can't see, Lorna finally has to put her trust in Benjamin. OK, stop. Don't move. Otherwise, you'll fall down. Yeah, that was really interesting. OK, mm. why? Because at the beginning, it was really scary, actually. Mm. When you were right up there on that rope bridge, so much more difficult and dangerous than this tiny kid's bridge, you didn't need me at all and you wanted me to go away. Mm. Yeah, I needed you here. Exactly. It's kind of made me realise that I don't ask for help when I could really do with it. Um, I just struggle on on my own. I do the best I can. And sometimes if I ask for help, it will be easier. <laughs> so I'm going to give a lot of thought to that. It's nearly two months since Lorna's financial makeover. She's come to meet Jay and Benjamin in one of her more outlandish creations to assess how life on a budget has been treating her. So, Lorna got to the end of this process, which I know for you was sometimes difficult. How do you feel? Yeah, it's been good. It's given me some real good tips and some things to think about. And it's given me a little push, which I needed. And it has helped to clarify my thoughts and put me on track. Yeah. I've got to ask, what's that on your head? <laughs> <laughs> I was going to ask her how the That's hats are me. coming on. But... <laughs> I like this. I made this, yeah. Did you make this? I did make this. I made this Very for a, romantic. I made this for a wedding. Oh. And I had a coat. I made myself a really long coat out of the same material that the hat is. Cos I was going to ask you, throughout all of this, you know, we've looked at areas where you could actually use your creativity. Have you decided on what is the way forward for you? Um, at the moment, I'm thinking of going down the bridal headwear. Oh, route. OK. Yeah. And I've investigated some wedding fairs in London, right. which are quite expensive to mm. do, but I'm going to go and look anyway yep. and see what Nothing there is. Nothing wrong with having a look. Um, but I'm going to try and book up to do one in Kent, which will give me something to aim for, so I'm going to work towards that. But I've also had another idea, as well as the bridal headgear, yeah. which I'm really looking forward to doing. I'm also thinking maybe funeral headgear. Oh, that's a yeah. new market. Yeah. That's interesting that yes. you should choose funerals. Yeah. Yeah. And this may actually be some playing through of the unconscious need to resolve some of your own near-death experiences. So it could be very healthy for you on a business perspective, but emotionally it might really pay dividends as well. Mm. How have you been getting on resisting the temptation to pop into the shops all the time? Because that was part of your daily routine, wasn't it? I do sometimes still feel the urge to go in, the pull, <laughs> as I'm going to the dog shop, which is right <laughs> next door. Um, but I've avoided it so have far, you? yeah. I remember when we first met at that car boot sale that you seem pretty much not bothered whether you were 35 or 39 grand in debt, four grand was not much. Do you think that in a way your attitude to money has now changed? I don't know if my attitude to money has changed. I'm, just, I'm making a really conscious effort not to use my credit card. But at least you know now, do you know what I mean? You know what the debt is. And now I'm trying not to add to it. Yeah. Um, and I need to add to it if I can make something from that, yeah. like buying the hat bits. Yeah. I want to make a profit from that. Yeah. We went through our battle about clothes selling. How are you feeling about that now? 
I've sorted out quite a lot have of you? stuff. I have, yeah, in my clothes room. Yeah. Was that hard? Um, no, not really. Well, Benjamin and I have got something for you which we thought would keep you focused definitely on getting rid of things rather than buying some new things. So that is for you. Thank you. What do you think that is? I have no idea. Oh. Read it out. Six day. All right. So, Lorna, Spenderholics would like to award you a six day picture at Whitstable Market. Oh, that'd be fun because I know so many other people there. <laughs> yeah. No really chatting, good. selling. All oh, right, okay. Oh, that's great, thank you. Well done, Lorna. I think you've made a terrific effort at this. We had a lot mm. of difficult things to look at, um, but you've been a really good sport all yeah, along. Yeah, you have. And you've been in good spirits. Mm. I've enjoyed it. Yeah. You've worked really hard and I hope it all works out. And if sure. I get married again, I would like a hat <laughs> for my wedding. Just day. like that. Just like that. Two weeks later, Lorna's finally tackled her wardrobe, decluttered and ready to sell at market. On this pile here, I've got lots of skirts, at least 30 skirts, that I really don't need anymore. And in this bag here, I've got at least 40 dresses and tops that I don't need either. So that's good, and that's thinned down my clothing collection. She's realising her business dreams with newfound confidence. I'm concentrating on making hats and producing my designs and stockpiling them so that then when I finally do it, I've got it all ready. Making money from something I absolutely love doing will be so great. So now I just have to go for it. <laughs>